Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so glad you came to sit down. I, I'm, I, I'm guessing you responded to the sign. Yes. I'm a bit tired. Uh, uh, just a bit tired? Just a bit. Uh, sit back. Relax. <laughs> How does it feel? It feels good, man. W what's your name, by the way? Vili. Vili. My name is Sam. Sam, nice to meet you. Tell me, Vili, why are you tired? Oh, brother, if I can just list all the things that makes me tired, we would be here till tomorrow morning. Give me the top two reasons why you're tired. Top two reasons. Top two reasons. I don't know if it's uh, uh, legally listed in the list of uh, diseases, but I'm a workaholic, actually. Oh, really? Yes, I can't get uh, over it. On average, uh, how many hours a, a week would you say? Well, I wish the week had 10 days. Let's put this <laughs> I see. Okay. W what's another reason why you're, you're so tired, really? You see, you look around, see what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in Venezuela. Ouch, man. All kinds of things. You know, I can relate very well to these situations because I grew up in, in the neighborhood of Ukraine. I see. So I see. It must be hard sometimes to turn on the television and yeah. see all these calamities. Yes, yes, yes. Oof, it's, it's really crazy that that this world just, just really brings us to a point of exhaustion. Do you ever feel like that sometimes? To be honest with you, I feel exhausted as we speak. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. It's, it's, it's crazy. Do you, ever, do you ever get a sense or a feeling that you're, like, you're, like, you're some kind of machine? You just keep going and going and going and, and you never get a chance to really stop. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Do you ever get no, that feeling? I am. No, it's not a feeling, it's a reality. That's how I live. Do you ever think there's a way out of that? If I knew the way out, I would be out. Seriously, like if you're going to continue working the way that you do, you're going to drive yourself to the grave. Let's well, my, my colleagues tell, uh, assured me that they will give me a very nice funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've heard what you said, Vili, and I, I want to run something by you. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Tell me what you think about this, yes. okay? All right, just, just, just for a second, just, I was just going to give you an idea, and you respond. You I just want you to, made me curious, really. <laughs> I, I, just imagine with me, okay? Yeah. Imagine with me that you had the possibility every single week to take 24 hours out of your time. No, that's not possible. Sorry. I haven't even told you what to do yet. No. Oh, wait, wait for it. Okay. To rest. To rest, 24 hours. To sit back and relax, to spend time with people that you love. Um, now, you could do it in many ways. You could spend time with your family, or you could get together in a community and do something amazing to heal the world in, in, in a really creative way. Whatever way that would actually engage your mind to rest. 24 hours, a whole 24 hours every single week. What does that sound like to you? Sam, I'm going to be honest with you, brother. Okay. Sounds very sexy, but not for me. <laughs> Why is it not for you? Because I can't. 24 hours. Do you know what you're talking about mm, here? Maybe. Mm, uh, rephrase it. You're saying okay. it's not for you. If you could do it, would you do it? Give me something to do. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. So, what if I tell you that that dream is a reality? Okay. Have you ever heard of the Sabbath before? Sabbath? Yes. I think I've read something. You see, the Jews came up with this concept years and years ago. And what they used to do is they used to stop everything, bring it to a halt, and they would actually spend time resting, understanding that they were created to rest, as well as to work, but created to rest. And today, here, we're here to try and bring back the Sabbath to London. Hold on, you're telling me that the Jews mm -hmm. are what they are today because they rest a day a week? The Jews are the richest people on the planet. Yeah, you know that, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're telling me that they are like that because they rest one day a week? You do know that they work like crazy as well, you know? Yeah. That? But still, they have time to rest. So today, we'd like to really try and campaign to bring this message of the Sabbath to the whole of London. Because, do you know what, Vili? I don't think that that's the way of life for you, to work and work and work. No, and I work agree with you. No, I'm not saying that this is the way, but I, I really... And, I'm stuck. and we want to challenge you to really try and f discover the Sabbath for yourself and embrace the concept for yourself. So today, this is why we're here on the middle of this busy street um, and you're randomly sitting on this sofa because yes. we are campaigning to try and talk about discovering the Sabbath for yourself. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting yeah. you and talking to you. I, I tell you what, Vili, um, I've got this here for you, this, and I'd like you to take this 
It's got our contact details on there. It's got some cool. important information, and it's this got a website cool. which can actually take you to discover the Sabbath for yourself. Looks good. You know, I think due to the situation I'm in right now, mm -hmm. I'm tempted to try it. I am convinced, Vili, that this will transform your life. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Vili. Thank you, Sam. All right. You take care. Have a great day. Thanks. So, the Sabbath so far. Maybe you've seen it before. Maybe you haven't. But it's quite as simple as it is, really. We take this random Swedish sofa <laughs> and we place it in the middle of the busiest public arenas around London. And we campaign telling people about this beautiful message of the Sabbath. I grew up in London. Um, I've been in the church all my life. But I'll be honest with you, only now do I actually start to re-engage the true beauty of what it means to be a Seventh-day Adventist. And so the message of the Sabbath so far is quite simple, to try and communicate this beautiful message of rest and package it in a palatable way so that anybody can take it home and be a part of it. We try to develop contacts through the art of social media, and the, the, the real beauty is to take people from social media into our lives and develop key relationships with them. That, in a nutshell, is the basics of the Sabbath so far. I'm going to hand you over to Vili, who will dig you into more details concerning the social media. Thank you, Sam. I feel so weird not being in control of my own <laughs> presentation. So, Doug... <laughs> If you can start the presentation, the power, the keynote, not the PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm not yet to pro presenter. <laughs> and I'm glad that uh, Delwin is here. Right, so some of you know who said that. Yeah? Uh, his name is Marshall McLuhan, McLuhan. And he wrote a book called Medium is the Message. Initially, it was Medium is the Massage but he meant medium is the message. If you are here because you are a communication or media director, that is your media and communication Bible. You can't do media or communication before you read medium is the message. I'm going to take you to the spirit of prophecy of communication, which is, Doug, I don't have the remote. Sorry. Sorry? You can't play the videos. I can play the videos, but I can't plug any software. The clicker, no worries, but can you play it for me? Good. So Phil Cook, um, that's where I've met first Costin in Loma Linda. Phil Cook, um, in the book Unique, he's, he's writing this. In a previous age, all a preacher needed to be successful was a good Bible, a calling from God, and strong lungs. Some of them kept all three until today. But in today's digital culture, where a typical Brit deals with as American, but I, it's, it's applicable to Brits as well, with as many as 5,000 media messages a day, how does the voice of your church rise above the rocket? Well, that's a question that we will search for the answer to this question probably forever. Um, because it's Sabbath, and we just... Uh, uh, we try to inspire you to take a, a, a bit of rest. This is my theology or the biblical foundation of my beliefs of digital media. Uh, you may be surprised to find out that the first reference to digital media in the Bible is actually in the Old Testament. Next, uh, Doug. Is in First Chronicles. You know, Issachar was Joseph's brother, was Jacob's son, one of the 12 uh, sons of Jacob, yeah? And the, of the children of Issachar were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel what ought to do. I would like to suggest tonight that all of you here in this room are these children of Issachar. And you are here because you have some dreams, ideas, ideals that you would like to put in practice in your own church, conference, union, or division. And I um, would like to encourage you to think like you are one of the children of Issachar. The next one, Doug, is in uh, the New Testament. 
this is a very poetic way. Uh, um, if you read the New International Version or uh, King James, it's quite different, but it says the same. He told them, Jesus, you have a saying that goes, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky at morning, sailors take warning. You find it easy enough to forecast the weather. Why can't you read the signs of the times? And we always apply this verse to the end of the times, the in the prophetic way. Well, I'd like to suggest tonight that we can think of this, interpret this uh, Bible passage uh, about today. We, we, we are called to read the signs of today. What's going on in the world today? How can we engage our media in today's culture? Um, what's next, Doug? Yes. This is a, a quote that I find absolutely um, um, eye-opening for me. If you marry the spirit of your own generation, you will be a widow in the next. And um, I would like to say that I can relate to the spirit of the old generation. I grew up in communism. I grew up just with books. Um, the first time I had a gadget in my hand was when I was already a grown up. So um, the spirit of my generation was quite different than the spirit of my daughter's generation, for instance. And um, the tragedy of our church is that we are still in that widow state. We like to be widows. And not that we like to be widows, but every day we go to the grave of our former spouse and cry our eyes out, hoping that the deceased spouse would come back from the dead. Let me tell you, it's not going to happen. Let the spirit of the old generation rest in peace. The beauty of being widow is that you can get married again. <laughs> and I would like to suggest that tonight, let's look for a, the, the right spouse for today, the spirit of this generation. Was, um, if you can play the um, teaser, yeah? On Vili, on, on Vili is a, uh, yeah, that one. Thank you. What's, What's happened? happened? Just, just calm, calm down. down. Just, just I'm gonna, gonna be there in two minutes. Just, just hold on for one, one second. second. Hello? Can you just hold the line for a second, please? Hold the line one second. Hold on. Ho hold on. Listen, the boss is on my tail and I really need you to get this done because this is driving me crazy, okay? I have 101 things to do and I have to get that document on his desk by Monday. Mum? Yes, Mum. I have. Yes. Okay. Oh, all right, okay, yes, I will, yes, I will, uh, yes, sir, no, no, I know, I know, I, I, I've been, I, listen, I will, I will get the email to you on Monday, first thing on Monday, nine o'clock, no, mum, don't do that, listen, uh, hello, where are you, what's happened, mum, yes, mum, listen, I've, I've got to go, I've, I've, I've had a crazy day, I'm so tired, but I'm going to call you when I get in, how much is it going to cost? No way, man. Excuse me, sir. I think you're a bit tired. Uh, Have a seat, please. We, we were playing once. We went with the sofa in St. Albans and said, let's do a video. And this is what uh, came about. However, uh, the next one, Doug, would be, uh, this is cool. 
But let's get real. Let's see what's happening on the street. And um, one day we've decided to go to London to see if, it, if it, the, the statistics we've read are actually true. Uh, London is tired, dog. Um, this, is, this was a very touchy moment what for us. What makes you tired in London? All these people. Party time. The heat. Work, exercise, um, people. In a hurry to catch a train, sorry. Glad I don't have time to get tired. I don't know, I even rush on my day off. My name is Fanele. I've been shopping around so I'm tired. <laughs> Carrying this bag makes me tired. So fast, everything's so fast. I find politicians very tiresome. Um, they talk a lot of rubbish. Fast for mortgage, make you tired. Not much, I'm fine, just get used to it. Every day, thousands of people join the London Rush to find happiness, success and prosperity. I just work very hard, so hopefully that, you know, when I am exhausted, I can have an easy life. Although some people may find these, something is still missing. We think we're missing something. Our friends, our family, um, the people that are important to us are the most important to us. And I, I think those are the things that just every day um, we should spend more time with. But for me, the pleasure is just working. I've, I've, uh, I have to admit, I've been divorced because of this. So I've lost my wife and my children over this because of working. So uh, but it's a choice you take, really. I'm a project manager for a, uh, a company, it's an American company, work very hard and um, I'll probably be carrying on working till 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. So it's uh, just non-stop work all the time really at the moment. Tea I think has caused people stress and if you're stressed then you become tired. A lot of people are under enormous pressure, a lot of people that are not being able to meet their monthly bills, not able to do day-to-day uh, -day things. Speed erodes health, productivity and quality of life. This generation could be stuck in a cycle that is hard to shift. Me, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it just to keep myself busy, keep myself happy. I do miss being able to sit down and do nothing. Um, but when you've got such a busy life and so many things to do, you just, you just can't, can't do that. Because if you don't do something, then you end up with, you know, with lots more to do at a later date. So I would like to have a holiday where I do absolutely nothing and just enjoy the sun. I just don't like wasting time. There's an expression that more haze, less speed. So the faster you go, the slower you get things done. S Spain, Italy and so on. You just find them much more relaxed. Uh, okay, maybe they don't achieve as much, but they, they take life in their stra More time for the families and other things there. I think it's just the way we all live now. Everything's got to be quick. While you lose your dream, I lose mine. Oh, and why don't we just spend time um, just relaxing and uh, being in the park and enjoying the sun. While you lose your hope, I lose mine. Well, you know, I've got children and I don't know exactly what to do at the moment. While you lose your job, I lose mine. Uh, financially, it's really tough. Uh, we can't get resources. When the economy gets a bit better, I, I can slow down. Is there a way to put the brakes on? Uh, f these are just a few glimpses, of course. The video is already long, but... Um, all the individuals we've met were um, telling us stories about their lives. And let me tell you, everybody is tired in London. Let's go next. Um, what you've seen, uh, Sam and I, doing here, uh, we've done a couple of times in London. Uh, Sam sat with people on the sofa. I was behind the camera. Roland, who's taking pictures, uh, edited all these videos and uh, we are filming the interviews. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't um, download the video from YouTube, but feel free to go and search on YouTube for the Sabbath Sofa channel and watch more videos uh, with, with what we've done. I'd like to give you a few, few facts. First and foremost, the majority of people that sat on our sofa sat because there was a camera in front of the sofa. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this project to you uh, today. Media is so important. Everybody wants their moment of fame. So they saw us young people 
with a sofa and the camera and the uh, photographer. So they volunteer. We don't have to drag them or beg them. They want to sit. Sometimes some was with uh, uh, people on the sofa and others were waiting just to get on the sofa to talk. Now, let's say if we had 100 people on the sofa, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, uh, me and Sam worked out that 85 of them did not know what Sabbath means. Uh, there, were, there were a couple of Jew guys, Jews, yeah, one guy. Um, but the majority of them did not know what the Sabbath means. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's fantastic. Postmodernism, secularism, or whatever you want to call it, whatever that means, is opening doors of opportunities for us as we never had before. The fact that he did, know, did not know anything about the Sabbath is a fantastic opportunity for us. 100% accepted the challenge. I tried to be difficult with some, but they, people on the sofa are not so difficult. When you challenge them to try the Sabbath for themselves, they all accept, embrace the challenge. And none of them raised the issue of the Sunday versus Saturday. Because that's how we grew up, and that's how we were taught. That we are better because we worship on the right day. So these are facts, and if you are entertaining the idea of, of starting a Sabbat Sofa campaign in your town, in your city, let us know, and we can help you. And um, we can tell you many, many other experiences that we've had. Let's go, uh, let's move on, uh, Doug. This is the, our newest uh, sub-project, if you wish, uh, element that we added to our um, um, Sabbath Sofa project, if you, if you wish. It's called the Sabbath Sofa Challenge. I'm going to show you just two videos. Start with, they are chronological, four and five, yeah? Yeah. Roses are red. Well, it's not a rose, but violets are blue. The Sabbath Sofa is here to challenge you. Right, yes. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. The, uh, the Sabbath so for which leads us to our Sabbath Sofa Challenge number, number four. four. It's Valentine's Day, but more importantly, it's time for another Sabbath Sofa Challenge. So, and now tell us, what is our next challenge? Well, keeping with the love theme, we thought it would be great for you this Sabbath to tell someone you love them because you love them because they make you happy. You love them because whatever it is, you finish the sentence. It doesn't have to be romantic. So I just walk up to someone and tell them that I love them and I make up a reason? Well, no, it's someone special to you. But it doesn't have to be romantic. Someone that's special to you, tell them that you love them and tell them why. Why they make you happy and why you love them. I like that. Yeah. I like that very much. Oh, yeah, I think I can do that. Good. All right, remember Here, to... you can give this to them. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, remember to give us your feedback on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Write back to us and tell us your experiences of what it was like to tell someone you love them because. And remember, you're not a machine. Experience the Sabbath. And the last one, last video of the night. Number, yes, five. Okay. It's time for another Sabbath Sofa Challenge. And today's challenge is called Count Your Blessings. We'd like you to experience the Sabbath understanding that God has blessed you. So take a page, list all the blessings for yourself. And if you're comfortable enough, copy and paste them and share them on our Facebook page. We would love to hear about your blessings. Remember, you're not a machine. Experience the Sabbath. Back to the presentation. Thank you. Next. Good. After this, uh, um, the blessing, count your blessing challenge was last Friday, so a week today. And um, we were very pleased to receive a couple of uh, images and messages from, from the viewers. And this is probably one of the most amazing ones we, ones we received so far. These three guys are from a church uh, somewhere west of, of this place. And they, you can't see 
there on the screen, but their blessings were listed on those pictures. They proudly took, on, on the papers, they proudly took the picture and um, sent it to us, so I posted. It was quite popular, you can see, um, over 400 likes on this uh, picture alone. Um, I'd like to tell you just a few uh, little insights from the Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Delvin, so now you know why I am. I, I, <laughs> I don't have a profile of my own. If you can go... Oh, no. Just, just escape, so see, see if I have that slide. No, it's not there. Um, on the Facebook page, the Sabbath so far, you can see. Please go and like the page if you want to keep in touch with us. We have about 22,000 people. Um, and the engagement is in the um, range of 4,000. A healthy Facebook page uh, has the engagement 10% of the people that like the page. If you have 10% of those that like the page engaged, that is a pretty healthy Facebook page. So um, we are exceeding that. We are very happy. So people are um, very much engaged in what we do. Um, there are posts that exceed 1,000 likes, and we are very happy for it. So this is a very... Uh, in, for me, it was a surprise, I, I'm going to be honest with you, the amount of people that wanted to uh, share our um, uh, pictures, infographics, our messages, after all. Now, I want to go back a bit to, if we can move on. That, this is how we grew up, I've just said uh, earlier. Um, here is us, the rest of the world, and what separates us? It's exactly the Sabbath, the day in which we worship. With the Sabbath so far, we try to do exactly the opposite. We can sit on the same sofa with the rest of the world because the sofa represents the Sabbath, which is a gift of God for the whole humanity, for the whole mankind. Um, I'd like you to think about these two, if you can go back to the other one, and uh, try to find a solution for yourself, for your city, for your church, how we um, heal this crack that is between us and the world. And um, I would like to encourage you, if not the Sabbath sofa, find something else to present this absolutely fantastic. Um, you would, pastors would call it, this is a distinctive, yeah? How can we make a distinctive um, doctrine universally valid? Now, last slide, I would like to give you the opportunity to ask us questions. Is only when we are in action that we are in this formula here, is the three of us and Roland. Um, if you would like to ask us anything, if you would like us to come to your town, to your city with the sofa, let us know. Uh, if you want any other details from what we do, I'm happy to share them with you. The Facebook page did not grow overnight. You have to be prepared. To, we started this project actually almost a year ago. And uh, it's not easy. The, um, Love, the Valentine's Day challenge. We have filmed it like five times <laughs> until we got to that result. And not even this one is not a good one because Sam's mic was uh, actually turned off. Oh, so we had, <laughs> not you, it's not your fault. <laughs> but uh, because we couldn't get together again, we had to uh, adjust uh, the sound on, on his. So we have here a mic if you would like to ask, or if you feel like you want to come and try it for yourself. <laughs> Please do come and take a seat. Yes. Where did you come up with the concept of the sofa? Or what were you thinking in that to arrive at that particular object? Well, Sam can answer better this, uh, this um, question. Yeah. Um, well, uh, for different reasons, different ways it actually came up with. Um, I was working with, a, with, with another pastor in London, and we were actually thinking about uh, trying to, to reach people, um, specifically trying to get people into a campaign that we were presenting. The campaign was on the Sabbath. 
um, and and we have a local shopping center in in in, in the middle of the shop, uh, of, of the town, and the idea came to actually plunk a sofa in there. The reality is is that um, um, well at least um, about two hours of my week I spend some time in coffee shops in London. It's 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 like our culture here in London. We love coffee shops, and. Um, as, we go in, as I went into this particular coffee shop, I remember a lady walked in. She had like three, four bags, and she was tired. And she came in, she ordered her chai tea latte, and she sat down. Um, and for a minute, for about half an hour, she spent her time just immersing herself into a book. Um, after about half an hour, she picked up her shopping bags and went back to her crazy life. And I just realized to myself, um, and I wished for her, at least, that her moment of rest could be longer than half an hour because she was so stressed. And the, realiza the realization just came, the fact is that we do this every single week where we have the privilege and the blessing from God of this thing called the Sabbath. And so the fact is the sofa symbolizes rest and we merge the two together. And this crazy guy said, let's do it. <laughs> And so we did it, and we plunked the sofa down, and the results were astronomical. The first time that we actually plunked ourselves down, it was in Marble Arch. I was so petrified. I was absolutely petrified, because I thought someone was going to come and completely just break down every single argument and just embarrass me on camera, whatever it is. The first lady that sat down, actually, she set the revolution for the Sabbath sofa. She, she sat down. And she basically expressed that she was so tired in her job that she needs to change the job. We kept in contact. Later on, she, she was um, from Germany, um, got a message from her in Hamburg saying that she had actually gone back home, changed her job to a job that had actually released her for the weekend, and now she could spend more time with her family. I mean, I can't tell you that she jumped into a baptismal pool, but what I can tell you is that she discovered the Sabbath for herself. There are a few <coughs> technical uh, things that you need to know. I don't know in your, your country, but here you need a special permit. The first time we did the sofa in Marble Arch, we didn't know about it. So we just showed up with the sofa. And we enjoyed the fact that we didn't know, <laughs> by the way. We enjoyed the fact that we didn't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the second time we went, uh, two police officers came to me and asked me, do you have a permit? So no, what's that? <laughs> well. <laughs> You have to, you know, apply. He looks a bit more convincing than that. <laughs> uh, and I, I was sincere. I said, I, I didn't know I have to do this. Um, and they said, OK, uh, I would like to ask you to leave. I said, listen, give us 15 more minutes. <laughs> and they gave us 15 more minutes. And uh, then we left. Uh, ever since, I mean, since then, I have purchased a general liability, liability insurance uh, for the project. We have to, you have to have insurance. And all the time we go, we uh, ask for, for permission in advance. On Wednesday, we're going to Kingston, uh, South London. Uh, just today, I've got the confirmation that we can go. Um, and actually, these guys in Kingston were really, really cool because they asked us, where do you want to do it? And uh, I said, I don't know. I don't know Kingston very well. And she said, um, would you like to go on this street? And I said, OK, let me find out. And Sam, Sam drove to Kingston, and Sam is FaceTiming me. He said, no, I found the best spot is here. And he was showing me around. Excellent, just pedestrians. And I said, look at the name of the street. He said, I can't see. But I, and I asked Sam, um, is, go and see where this street is. Uh, Clarence. Clarence. Clarence Street. street yeah. Yeah. And he said, OK, I'll call you back. <laughs> 30 seconds later, he called me. I'm on this street, actually. They <laughs> offered us the best spot. Um, you have to show them what you do. And I don't have, I, we do have a document for the campaign, but I always send them links from Facebook mm -hmm. and from YouTube so they can watch what we do. And uh, I'm sure that this lady watched the videos and she realized what we're all about and she offered us the best spot in Kingston to go on Wednesday. If, if I might, really. Um one of the things about this project, it's, it can be quite scary, not just to meet um, the other on the sofa, but it can be quite scary to actually converse with uh, organizations like the police, like uh, the council, et cetera, et cetera. We, they have shown us that we have actually got nothing to fear. They love the project so much. We sat down with the police commissioner for Westminster, and she literally loved the project. The dream of this project is, is to actually 
campaign for London to not just embrace the Sabbath, but we want to hopefully, God willing, in the future, look towards a national Sabbath day of the year where we can call London as a whole to rest. When we told that vision to the police commissioner for Westminster, she was gobsmacked. She was like, wow, this is amazing. We need this. So it's just, I guess it was an encouragement for us. It's like, we literally have nothing to fear. The Lord is on our side. We have uh, the, one of the most beautiful messages that we could ever have at our fingertips. And people want it. So yeah, that was- She, that she was said a, this particular lady, she said that she really needs the Sabbath in her life. She didn't hear about the Sabbath before, but she said, I can't afford 24 hours. I mm -hmm. said, no problem, start with six. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yeah, I'm gonna start with six hours. I think there was a question here. I just want to encourage you because in Norway I have a couple of friends who are not in church. One is not in church anymore. Another one has never been in a church and they both love the Sabbath soap and they're following you all the time. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you're tired, guys, I'm just going to allow you to go to your beds and think. Could I propose, um, Willy? Um, that the people who want can come and have their picture taken because we all media people here. Yeah. With a tire, are you tired? Have a seat, have a sofa, yeah, and sure. join it up. You know, I'm sure I'm just adding extra work to you and Roland. Yeah. But if people are interested, sure. just trying it for mm -hmm. themselves. So, sure. you know, after we close the, the session, obviously, at people a are fee, wanting to. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, I think they'll have to choose between you, Sam, yeah. or beautiful Anna, yeah. who they want to sit on the sofa with. But hey, uh, hey. <laughs> no hard feelings. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So just remember, this is not a Bible study. This is not a, 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 an instrument uh, that we want to use to bring people into the church. This is a public campaign in which we present the Sabbath in the purest possible form. The gift of God for mankind. Full stop. If they want to learn more, we give them cards, we ask them to take pictures with them, tag them on Facebook, keep in touch. Sam is gonna, and Roland, you're gonna meet with some, uh, some of the girls that were on the sofa. Yes, yes. Um, one of the beauties about this is taking it from social media um, into reality, where we actually meet people face to face and develop relationships with them. And so uh, we've managed to secure some coffee shops, not co the entire coffee shops, um, where we can meet people, and, and, and they're, they're quite willing to come and meet with us and talk with us and develop a relationship and more. And so the whole team, we're going to come and sit and get to know them. And that's, that's the beauty of this project. So, yes. This is it from us. Thank you for Thank you very much. listening.